Check one, check, check. Check two, check three. All three reactors are melted down. Pretty shitty, uh, pretty shitty way to start a video off. All three reactors are melted down. There you go. That's all you need to know. Have a nice night, folks. And we'll catch you tomorrow night on the live show here where I'll tell you about the fort reactor. <laughs> That's burnt down. Caught fire twice. Building four. And the list goes on. I started the video off. I was trying to, like, it's hard sometimes to come up with names. And I was, well, first Japan came for the Pacific and... And it came from the Philippines, and I was like, no, actually it came from Canada and the United States. And, but uh, the Philippines sounds better because they flattened 7,000, got what was left, 7,000 islands. I was just watching footage for the last half an hour, and I, and I put a message there. But that video, I decided to take that message down because I didn't want to get into that debate tonight, uh, what that particular video was saying. And so I'm not going to do that now. But 7,000 islands, folks, if you're not familiar, these were sustained winds for 48 hours. That was 300 miles wide. 300. The eye of an F4 tornado, and the biggest tornado ever on the planet before that, was maybe a half a mile. And that was just like one, only one. Usually, at best, it would be a quarter mile wide, and it goes six miles. This monster, this creature, spawned by the radiated ocean. Because um, you got to think about how the, the isotopes are working. In, and they change properties to another isotope, and then they disintegrate, so that's what they call it. But they change to another isotope. And some of this, the isotopes will be uh, four and a half billion years for uranium-234, 235, before that's going to change. And all the reactors had uh, uranium-234-235 in it. That's the weaponized part of the uranium. Uh, uranium-238 is what's left over. And that's what they use uh, in the A-10 Warthog, in the Abrams tank, and soldiers' rifles. Uh, and, you know, these are not coded. They're not tipped. But the Pacific is so radiated, now it's spilling over into the Atlantic. Of course, everybody knows that. And then you think about the Pacific, how many square miles is actually out there, because a lot of people think of it at 5,000, 6,000 miles wide, and 8,000 miles long. But do the square mileage on that, and you can understand how much clouds the entire Pacific Rim is picked up and moved all over the coastline. And this is radiated, air-radiated water. And so the typhoon is picking this stuff up, and it's going to be much worse. Now every day, now I'm just I'm I'm in fear all day every day that another one of these storms, and at some point it will show up again sooner than later. Is going to take out another country. It took out the Philippines. It took out the Philippines, and we don't know a hundred percent because. Most of the Philippines still haven't seen any help, still haven't seen fresh water or relief of any type. They still don't have power. They're still terrorized. And that was another thing. Um, in all these shows, if you go back and you get into the show, you hear my dog snoring in the background. Every one of them. It's something that, that's just the way it is. There's nothing I can do about it. Because I've been blogging for so long, she's been around the whole time. That that's the mode she goes and just burn me off for an hour because she knows I'll give it up. Maybe. And we see we got uh, Miss Milky showing up again tonight. She was here last night as Jan Brooks. And uh, I didn't recognize her. I was like, who the hell is Jan? <laughs> and then, ah, this is Miss Milky. And so I couldn't even comment back. I don't know about your comment sections, but once it gets down to about five or six comments... There's no reply on my comment section. I can never, even though I got finally got the Google pussy figured out, kind of, sort of, almost. Well, at least I can do comments, I thought. But there, I can't get access to anybody's comment after four or five comments down. It's either I got to sit there and answer everybody, or I can't reply to anybody. It's the stupidest system imaginable. Uh, I digressed, I know. I wanted to come down to the comment section. Tear that off. Tear that off so I'm not spinning my neck around. And uh, hi, camshaft. I'm just going to say hi to folks for a few minutes here. 
Hi, Cats Alive, just passing through. Uh, Kriti, I can't even pronounce yours, morning. Missing Sky, hi. Missed you the last couple of times, never got a chance to say hi to you. Uh, Miss Milky, of course, again, saying hi to Missing Sky. Hi, Hippie. And uh, Yasele, I think that's Kate. I was looking to try to find your comment, because I know you told me your name, but I couldn't find a comment before it came on in. I was like, damn it. Hi, Rob. Uh, so, folks, when you come to my stream, by the way, if you've never been here before, and there's comments to the left-hand side, we're live. If the screen is black and you see a countdown timer, that's to give you a chance to know exactly by, and that's the countdown timer specific to your region. So it adjusts itself to everybody's computer. And if you're trying to figure out if I got a live stream, uh, what they call it, an event, you go to my front page or anybody that's doing that stuff and you click on uploads and you'll see playlist uploads and you'll also see events. And so if you click on events, you'll see the events and you can actually set that and save it in your bookmark and so you can just open that bookmark and have a quick glance to see if there's either one scheduled and get back to whatever you were up to if you're curious and you're thinking that way and it's a good thing uh, a couple of nights ago we had 1560 comments uh, I can't even imagine because only come talking to the screen a lot of times so I don't catch it but when I was trying to read through it it was like holy cow how did he pull that off that was utterly amazing hi Rod Foods for life Adamine, hi, Sergeant, uh, Duane, Lisa, I don't know what you're asking. Hi, Kurtzer, Kay, Alex, I'm just going to say hi, like I said earlier. Hi, um, Daisy, 333DFD, yeah, Google sucks. Uh, hi, Robin, yeah, you want to see my dog? I got to get her when she's not snoring. Uh, I've done a video before about Google where I, I got her trained where she'll grin and show her teeth. This is the cutest thing you'll ever see. I used to ask her, what does she think of Google? And she'd show you her teeth. It's a pretty funny video. Pretty sweet. Hi, Christopher. You made it? Yeah. It's always hammering away there now. She's sawing logs. Had a lot of snow. Um, hi, Sylvia. Uh, <laughs> hi, Lugman. We got a lot of people here tonight. There's a lot of people said hi here tonight. And I tried to say hi to a bunch of people earlier tonight just in case I couldn't get access. Hi Mandelson, just in case I couldn't access to the, the comments. Camshaft. Um, I'll run down maybe, see. My comment section doesn't go very far. And I'm afraid to open up a window like you folks have because it takes up more resources on the bandwidth. And so we'll just let the comments settle down here and I'll come back because they're gone pretty crazy. And there's a, um, you know, Sylvia says, God, I'm cranky tonight trying to explain isotopes and particles physicist to an ace here, and I don't understand if it's a particle or energy that is killing us. Yeah. Um, you know, people are, people are becoming more receptive to uh, Fukushima. And so it's really important, even though it's frustrating for everybody right now, but it's important that everybody is able to articulate the very basics of why this is a huge, massive, inconceivable, unbelievable, nightmarish, heartbreaking, earth destruction. And so we'll just go over the basics for everybody again. Is uh, Chernobyl, up to this point, was the worst you know what they say anyway the worst nuclear um, catastrophe is probably the better way to put it it was a 30 percent meltdown and those reactors in chernobyl were graphite fuel which is totally different from what's at fukushima and that chernobyl was one third uh 30 percent meltdown and one third the reactors were one third the size of any of the reactors at fukushima and so Chernobyl, by definition, in that case, is one-ninth one ninth, uh, of the smallest reactor that melted down, say, number one, at Fukushima. And 
When Chernobyl melted down, the whole world panicked. They gave aid iodine in all kinds of countries. They made people evacuate immediately in all kinds of uh, other countries because of the fallout. And I know you've heard the fable, and I've seen it in the government's records where they would say, we didn't tell people about it because we were afraid when they were moving to get another dose. Um, well, see, that's a really disgusting thing to say in the first place when what they should be saying is, we forgot to tell everybody to stay indoors for those couple of days when the plumes were the strongest. But what they done was they turned off the detectors all along the coastline so there'd be no pains of conscience that would beat, uh, you know, somebody would come out and say, I don't know why they're not telling everybody there's radiation detectors are gone crazy like the movies, you know. Um, and so they turn all the detectors off, and that way nobody had those pains of conscience. And everybody in the last couple of years in the scientific community have been uh, throttled in what they're allowed to talk about. In fact, Canadian scientists marched on the streets here a couple of months ago because um, they felt they were being throttled, and they weren't allowed to talk about anything. And what it was was it included everything, but it was about... Fukushima, because they just couldn't come out and say to the scientists, we don't want you talking about Fukushima, because that ain't going to work very good, especially in Canada, of all places. You have no idea about Canada. Canada is like ninny land. It really is. It's not like the Americans at all. Certainly not like the Britons either. Canada is a very unique place. We're very privileged people. We don't uh, think about the rest of the world enough enough and I do a lot of it and that's why I do the things I do because I understand that how privileged I am as a Canadian and so when I'm explaining it to people even in Canada they're so used to being privileged it's really hard to reach them and it's not that they're uh, standoffish it's just they can't conceive it because they've been so privileged their entire life and they don't understand how the rest of the world lives on a dollar or two dollars a day that can never sink into their heads because they've been so privileged their entire life. Um, and Canada doesn't have much to brag about in other senses where we don't have a military. We got three submarines and they're all at the West Edmonton Mall in Alberta where people sit there and get their picture taken. And so we, we live in this really extraordinarily privileged place and it's going to be hard, I think, more so for people in Canada than anybody else on the planet to comprehend it, to understand that uh, the, you know, the west coast of Canada entirely now is a write-off because uh, what's happened to the Philippines is going to happen here. It's going to happen all around the Pacific Rim, but it's only going to spread a lot further as time goes by. And the evidence now is extraordinary where we see all these storms are getting more powerful. All storms are more powerful, and that's because of the radiation that's been carried around this planet for so long. I gotta keep my eye on the comments because I can end up like we done the other night, not paying attention, and everybody laughing at me and yelling at me in good gesture and properly. Hang on, I'll bring that down. That way I got two ways of making sure I don't mess up. Uh, hi Mark. Mark Mark, I watched Mark's video yesterday and he was uh, he was making a reference about dandelion. And he split me into laughing. He was, uh, he was like, well, I live in Detroit, and I would need a bloody thing out of the ground down here. But his delivery is very funny. It's worth watching. And he should do more of it. If the more you do, the better you get at it, Mark. And I think you were about 5 minutes and 40 seconds into the video before you, you forgot about the camera for a second, and you just, you just started talking for a moment, right? You, where you slipped away from the camera realizing you're talking to a camera and trying to keep your train of thoughts to just being you. And uh, these are powerful moments uh, when, you ex when you can get past that. And I'll do it. You hear me when I'm ranting? I'm literally just lost in the rant. The camera doesn't mean anything to me at that moment for five minutes or whatever. And... You know, and when I watch uh, to check for problems with the videos, I see those things happening and, and I realize, you know, I wish I could do that. I wish I could be like that all the time because that's me. And I try to bring structure, unfortunately, unfortunately, I guess in a way, because uh, it's important that we have structure for people to be able to uh, interact with each other 
with a powerful argument. That's what it's all about. It's all about uh, knocking that ball out of the park. All my videos, were, that's what I've been trying to do in some way or another for most of the videos before this started was uh, about victims and the people involved in these things and these events and these obnoxious uh, people on the planet. And I'm reaching out just to a handful, five, ten people when I make each of those videos. And it's got nothing to do, it's got nothing to do with anything outside of that. I wanted to put a message out there, another narrative. Because without the other narrative, I don't see the sense of... Uh, of what they're doing or what they're saying and so why don't we have the other narrative there because that changes the game but as you grow older and you play around with that you realize you know that that was okay that educates you it, it allows you to open up your horizons and look at things eight different ways and before you make up your mind and so when Fukushima happened um, it took a little while for that to kick in and uh, the first reaction was anger and rage still got it but real anger, real rage. And so that worried me. That worried me. If someone like me could be like that, then what about the, what's happening to the people that don't know what's going on or just waking up to what's going on and are getting the wrong information or getting you know, little bits and pieces of information and never getting uh, the context from many different sources? Because I'll go ahead and watch all the bootlick and cheerlead and lap dogs out there so I know how to counter their nonsense, their lies, their blatant gatekeeping. And uh, to me, that's the biggest, I should move back a bit. But to me, that's the biggest, the biggest thing you could do is listen to the gatekeepers so you can know how to defeat the gatekeepers. And then you will find out at the same time how um, the people in your in your loved ones, your families, your friends, and the people you encounter, what you're up against. Because that's the indoctrination machine. They keep saying it everywhere, everywhere, is what you'll end up finding out. And so that's a revelation. So you have to go listen to uh, the scum of the earth in order to understand what the argument you need to put forth because you don't know what the argument is. You can come out, like I say, and explain everything, how there's three reactors have melted down, how a fourth one had a detonation. Reactor one, two, and three are hemorrhaging. They have left, left their containment within days of those explosions. That's all confirmed now. It's amazing what's been confirmed in the last two and three weeks. Isn't that something? And the headlines today are over the top. Right, come back and say hi for a few moments. The headlines today, thank you, Miss Melky. I know you're you're unbelievably good soul, cause you get it, right? And I wish I had what you had in your head to be able to. And I'm trying, make no mistake, but you know, you've been at this so long, and you there's so much you you avert, you study, but you can't put up on your site. You just can't get to it all. You know, your computer is full, right? Um, and that's because. You went down the rabbit hole and there was no end to the hole and so you just keep keep going and you've got to keep going and there's no way you can stop. There's nothing you can do about that no matter what you try, what you think or how much you wish. You can't stop. You can't unlearn what you know. And like you say, you know, not everybody can sit here in front of a camera. That I get. That I understand oh so well. It's very, very frustrating. Just trying to do a little video. It's insanely frustrating. But there's a need now for uh, people like us to keep pushing at all costs, no matter how much it wears us down, how many times it wears us down. Uh, you know, you got If you can't make it through the day, you'll make it. You, the next day, you're back in business again. Somewhere you'll find out resolve. It's, um, and I don't know where it comes from 100%, but I do know one thing that once you get bit by it, once you understand it, once you uh, have no choice, I make you, once you have no choice, because your brain, at some point you have no choice because your brain won't leave you alone. And the only thing that gives you comfort, and the only thing that will actually give you peace, and the only thing that will fulfill you is sourcing things out and doing something with us.
trying your best, sharing it. The most powerful thing you could ever do besides, um, you know, taking it to the streets itself and being the monkey wrench in the machine, you know, throw yourself in that machine is the digital age. It's the most important things we can do is share our information. And uh, unfortunately, the information that I, I think other people are sharing, like, you know, uh, the big globalist sites, the mainstream media, they turn out to, to really uh, offend me. They offend all of us, I'm sure. But it offends me that um, there's no way they could not know the difference. So eventually you learn that they just read teleprompters and their job was to sell it. And that's why we have to exist. We got no choice. There's nothing we could do about that. Um, and we shouldn't have to do that. But we can't trust them ever till the end of time. We can't trust them and so we always got to do it. And so that's why Japan has that secrecy law it's in one sense is meant to protect them. They're going to make this retroactive in a lot of ways to cover up things that they already done and bury it. And is to put that chilling effect up on the people that are uh, being uncooperative um, for them, but are being uh, humanitarily uh, conscious for us and are speaking out and releasing documents and are slipping it out there. And so this chilling effect now is more important again. It's not only the internet blackout that they have in Japan since October 25th, uh, 7 point, I think it's a 5 actually, 7.5 earthquake. They tried to downgrade it. But when Richter died, who came up with the scales for the earthquake, they actually decreased it then by uh, 1.2 or something. So that's a huge earthquake they had happened down there. Um, and I just want to run over a few of these headlines. Uh, these are some wild headlines. Prime Minister's wife, Fukushima Calamity. I'm going to open that up and just touch on that for a second. Please hit the like button. There you go. Missing Sky. Sharing is caring. Yeah, you guys are great at this. You guys are doing great. Like, uh, you guys have pushed me out there so much. Um, there's no way that this will be happening without you, okay? I know that we need video and everything to make that happen, but you guys are working nonstop at us. I see that. I don't miss that, okay? I've been seeing that every day. I read every comment. I might wake up the next morning and start reading again if I fell asleep, but I'll read every comment if that's what it takes because uh, my brain won't let me not read those comments. won't let me uh, not think about those comments, not think about each of you, not... You know, and I do look at your sites. I do look at your videos. Uh, and that's something that I'm good at anyway. That's something that I'm good because my music, you see the music on my site. You have no idea. Uh, each artist on my site, I probably went through a thousand singers before I found somebody with least reasonable vocals, if not unbelievable vocals. And all of them have a little gift that eventually they will be something else. 98% um, of them will be outstanding. So it's one in a thousand, and that's a lot of work, you know. That's an amazing amount of work over years to find all those artists, and half of them are now deleted off my page by um, the creature that is Google who bought uh, the robotic, eight robot companies in the last eight months. And just touch on that for a second. It's because they're so good at algorithms, right? That's what they do. They're CIA, Mossad, they're MI6, MI5, they're CSIS from Canada. It's a conglomerate of the this network of the good old boys club. And their job is now to try to figure everybody out, figure out who's sharing the videos and cause them problems, figure out who's sharing stories and cause them you know, get rid of their subscribers, get rid of their connections. To, you know, that's what it's called. It's called Operation Wildfire. And so their job is to get out there and stamp out the wildfires, which are us. We are the wildfire, big time for these people. But they're learning. Uh, hi, baby mama. And, yeah, I agree with Mickey. 
Yeah, Google Plus makes responding incredibly difficult. Don't I miss Milky? It's absolutely brutal. And so I'm going to have to find another chat room and set up for everybody. And that's a headache too, right? But it's got to be, if I can find a decent chat room where it's not going to give you, you can comment as much as you like, you can leave links, you can uh, insert pictures and stuff like that, then we'll set up that chat room and we'll probably keep this one. We'll have both of them. We'll keep this one for the YouTubers and we'll bring them over to the chat rooms. And uh, that might be something we have to do. We got no choice to do at some point. And I mean, we should do it now in one sense. Um, but that's something to think about. Hi, Remix. Uh, Macaulay. Macaulay. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Morning to you. And Jimmy Joe Smith. Well, everybody's getting my videos out there. That's obvious. My videos. I've been censored for a couple of years straight and they took 3,800 of my subscribers in one go. They, I've lost around five, 5 million views or so off my site. Not that I care about that part, but the 3,800 subscribers, uh, when they got rid of that, that was the end of me. I, I didn't stop making videos and my, all of my videos were, you know, it's a lot of work. But I, it's not about the views, it's, it's just about a handful. Uh, involved in that video, the reason I made the video is to hope to put another narrative out there. But they got at me up 3,800 subscribers. Unbelievable. And so I've been rebuilding my site. And, you know, it's a good thing in that sense, right? Because that works out perfect for the Fukushima. The most important thing, you know, there's no other video that I can make now outside of Fukushima. There is nothing else out there that even uh, interests me. In, in a little tiny bit me anymore and that's pretty frightening uh, I, I read a lot of this, not a lot but some stories every day and I say to myself I could tear them apart in a matter of two hours sit behind my computer with some pictures and that video and no I can't do it that's a waste of time and energy for me I'm curious because some of them stories are relevant I think and so I'll go check it out but um that was another thing I wanted to mention to everybody. And I'm going to come back over to the comment section in a minute because that's kind of what I wanted to do tonight was try to chat with people a little bit. Um, but look up stuff like uh, when you're bored and look up uh, lectures, uh, low-level radiation. And you're going to get both sides of that. Probably more of the side you don't want to hear than the side you want to hear. And you're going to get all kinds of really interesting stuff. Uh, and these are a lot of the gatekeepers, but you need to understand that. But you also learn, right? So you gotta you, don't let that put you off, especially the insults. If the insult uh, things you know, don't let that put you off. And so that's what I do all day. Is I watch lectures and I watch, uh, hopefully half an hour, hour videos or presentations about radiation. So I'll look up uh, how radiation affects animals, radiation affect plants. Uh, I like looking up old nuclear testing each day. And I have a massive collection of all of this. And I'm just trying to find everything and anything um, to keep me, to keep my brain going and connecting dots. And so the rhetoric drives me crazy. I'll always listen to those videos two or three times. They're downloaded. I'm always using my old cam and I'm grabbing the lies they're saying. Um, that's really important and you'll find a lot so you can put them in the playlist and just let them stream and you get laughs now because you start seeing through their fables and their lies and you need to take notes and screen captures and put it in a folder and then put a tag on it of why that made you mad like they say radiation will never get here from Fukushima for instance I've heard a number of people saying that and I got a lot of clips of people saying that at some point they're going to come out with those clips uh, Miss Milky says, I was told a doctor who visits the Pentagon views my videos. I bet they do. You can be sure they do. Because many, many people are re-uploading your videos, Miss Milky. And your videos are extremely articulate. And it's a lot of uh, links underneath it. To, and then you put all the other stuff in the video. So you're hammering away at them. Plus, you have a great sense of humor. See? I'm a little, I'm quite a lot more abrasive. Well, I am abrasive compared to you. 
uh, but your kind of abrasiveness is you're using a little bit of humor or some animal noises and a little bit of funny music or a funny skit from a movie and that kind of stuff frightens them they don't like that see but uh, you're cadgy enough that you're not getting your videos knocked down so you know what to choose to get away with it because you've already learned your lesson and that worries these people I can assure you uh, a lot of people have watched your videos because your videos goes to the four winds right away which is really you know you know you you know you're doing good when that happens I can you can be sure hi Miss Frill hi moments nothing more oh I, uh, hi shift starfish dying yeah uh, a friend of mine was telling me today the uh, they used to go down and get all kinds of starfish for fertilizer. They went down recently and uh, there wasn't a starfish to be seen. The rocks were bare. Unbelievable. That's here. So that's quite the story. And Christopher, Alex. Yeah, the good thing is if you're feeling uh, tired and washed out, radiation gives you energy. Rad's in the snow, so your snow picks up a lot of radiation. All the cesium in the pot, it supersizes it. Yeah, and so uh, I wanted to come back over to that. Hang on, I'm getting there. So the night was a, a basically a chat, but we're covering lots of bits and pieces. And that's how we do it. It's a live stream. It's not like I'm doing a lecture. It's not like I'm doing a presentation all the time or I'm doing a rant all the time. Uh, and I should really do that more presentations I'm gonna be doing one here in town uh, soon and so I'm gonna fill up um, I'm gonna fill up the local hall here and hold about 500 people and I'm gonna have all the pictures and do a full presentation for about an hour and a half for everybody and I think if we can get one town um, if we can get one town to stand up and start doing evacuation drills for radiation or stay in your house drills for radiation stuff like that we can get other towns and so I don't see anybody else is gonna do it I guess I gotta do it myself and so I'm putting together a presentation and um, there's other things going on that's really good for me so I can see this happening soon and I'll be videotaping it all because it'll all be in a good presentation and um, I'm trying to do it so that I can just also have uh, people rip the audio and it will make sense to those people too. That's a little trickier than what I wanted. Prime Minister's wife, Fukushima calamity beyond people's assumptions. So much hidden. And this is up on E&E &E News, the best site out there. I hope they will make everything public. My goodness. Uh, inside source and they're trying to get people 55 and older to work on Fukushima reactor uh, now you can take that two or three different ways obviously 55 and over uh, would, in one sense would mean that they got more skill they got more knowledge less opportunity because you got all these news people coming through uh, and then you can also take it as they're trying to get you know they're desperate and they're bringing bring out your old and feeble and the cinnamon there. and I don't think it's like that I think it's about bringing in skill management um, and because tep because the Yakuza is probably don't want to be there no more they're sick of that it's not easy money anymore see just there's, there's a price for it a heavy price for their monies right now and so that, that could be a symptom of that for duties and now they're going to ask these people will they go in there or agree to relocations around 150 per year do you think it's going to last that long one of those typhoons that done the philippines in is going to do japan in let's get that straight that's that's going to happen and i'm not ooh voodoo stuff and chicken bones okay this is based up on the fact that the ocean is inconceivably unbelievably destroyed till the end of time it's destroyed and that's really truly what we gotta come back to and realize when you read the headlines like t this is from TV right worries that Fukushima is radioactive material found 80 feet below unit 4 record high contamination in groundwater near unit 2 and these the numbers are unbelievable um, 
but every time it rains, all that radiation is washing down, and the, the, the bedrock is 100 feet below those reactors. Now, they put in 100 foot of topsoil, rocks and sediment and everything else, and then they built uh, Fukushima's prefecture's uh, military industrial complex on top of the 100 foot topsoil. And at the bottom of it is an old, what they call an old riverbed. It's a great big thing. And there's no such thing as an old riverbed in the sense of once a riverbed, always a riverbed because there's a mountain behind us. So the water still runs down the mountain, runs along the riverbed and out into the ocean. And so all the radioisotopes have, regardless, would go down into the water and out into the ocean. But the cores are melted in three buildings. And so that's being flushed out. And once again, for people that don't understand the math, each of the reactors needed 1 million gallons a minute, just 1,440 minutes in a day. With three reactors, that's 4.3 billion gallons a day that the reactors needed. And the Earth was split all over the place by uh, some of these uh, reactions of the cores going down and hitting the bedrock. Um, and so that ground is unstable. They're spraying water on it all the time. It's full of rods from the explosions. And all these isotopes are being washed out to sea, but lifted into the environment at the same time from all over the site and all over the prefectures. Like uh, my second last video of Fukushima by the numbers, I'd never finished that video, and the numbers are just extraordinary. They're inconceivable per cubic meter per square meters. In all the prefectures all around Japan, Japan is totally, not just 80%, but 100%, uh, hideously contaminated because there was so much of a release just in the f in one day releases of 276 thousand million million Beckwell's disintegrations per second of uh, cesium-137 and cesium will break down into another one it'll break down into another one it'll break down to another one so cesium they say got a half-life of uh, 30 years Right, so then it's got then it goes for another fifteen years, but that breaks down to another isotope. You know, the stuff that broke down is still radioactive isotopes. It's just not cesium anymore. So half of the cesium is left over. So the cesium is not going anywhere for at least eighty years, because as it breaks down, and breaks down, and breaks down. But then all of these other ones are breaking down and breaking down. They got half lives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we don't know the long term. There is no long term studies because we, we haven't had nuclear on the planet that long in order to understand what happens after 4.5 uh, billion years when uranium gets its half-life. We know theoretically it turns into, um, it turns into americium, I think it is, into another isotope, and then that breaks down a, million, a billion years later into another isotope. So... Come back in a half a billion years and tell me about it, and I'll consider it's an issue. But right now, the fact that it doesn't lose any of its energy, uh, if it broke down in eight days, like the iodine they want to tell you about, then uh, I wouldn't mind uh, nuclear so much. But the fact that they've never gotten rid of the waste, they don't know, they don't know how to decommission a nuclear plant. It's never been done. This hasn't even been tried. It truly hasn't been tried. And what they do is they dump it in the ocean, 45-gallon drums, or they put it on uh, big ships, and they take them out, and then they sink them, they scuttle them. That's why the pirates ended up off of Somalia. There was 45,000, 45-gallon drums, like you say, right off of San Francisco. And half of that now is rotten, and that's why you got all these dead seals and sea lions and seal pups and birds and uh, dead animals all on uh, that coastline can be blamed on a lot of that, but, you, you know, Fukushima goes right in there. It's right in there on both sides. It's already here in Canada six months ago, the plumes have. And we've seen a lot of uh, spraying here. We've seen a lot of fog. So a lot of people equate uh, chemtrails, and I forgot last night about, to mention about the fog. You know, I had the fog you get in, um, in Seattle and Vancouver for 11 days, right? Remember, that fog came in my house. Came in my house in wintertime, and I had all the heat on, and it came across the barriers of my door, and that's when I realized it ain't fog, because you can't see fog. Uh, I'm from Newfoundland originally, and there's 120 days a year of fog 
So I know a thing or two about fog, you know, because I grew up there. And I used to fish on that ocean. I seen uh, fishing on that ocean down there where we never seen the entrance. Uh, I think it was Fortune Harbor for two weeks because of the fog. We were in and out of that harbor every day. Never seen the harbor for the first two weeks because of the fog. But that fog, when you get close to it, it disappears. No matter how close you get to fog, it disappears. And so when it comes in your door and you can go right up to it, then that's not fog, right? But everybody around uh, this community was wondering and uh, were worried about this fog. They've never seen nothing like it. And it finally came out to the media, they called it fog again. They were trying to make fun of it and marginalize it. This was aggregates uh, meant to grab on the radiation because it's an electrical particle and weigh it back down, something we've been at for a long time. And that's not the one I wanted to go down last, because I went down that last night, but I just want to touch up on it. And here's another E and E news, and I should come over to the comment section for a second and say hi to everybody, because I haven't done much of that lately. And uh, 40 minutes has gone by, so. Yucca Flats, um, Siegfried, hi. These people have no clue of what they're doing. Well, yeah, they're compar a lot of people are compartmentalized. No nuclear radiation, just, you know, there's nothing, no, there's no, they got what they call acceptable levels, but they're not acceptable levels, medically speaking. They're acceptable to a couple of bureaucrats and aristocrats that should be swinging from telephone poles and probably will be in the future uh, because this planet, if it's not woke up properly, will panic and uh, a lot of communities will go after the locals in their community, which is wrong in, in one sense. You know, because but but you got to realize the Canadian government, for instance, no. The American government, no. The Philippine government, no. What was happening, and still knows what's happening, and are refusing because they're worried now about being held accountable, and they should be because they will be. You know, one thing we should do in the near future, we need the Nuremberg trials for all of these people in the governments that knew and never said nothing, never told people to stay indoors. Look at the 1950s and 60s films, Doc and Cover, where they were indoctrinating everybody and, what, and you would have to be locked up in your home the whole nine yards and that the government was here to protect you, the government would warn you, the government had all this equipment that you paid for and the government's job was to do the right thing. And that wasn't martial law, what they were showing and what they were employing was that was the responsible thing to do was stay indoors right, for at least a couple of days for the fallout, and then we would get evacuation orders for those areas because they were contaminated. And so because of Fukushima, they made a conscious decision not to tell anybody. And the result of that is unbelievable cancers, and the Philippines doesn't exist anymore because we never even tried to help it. Look at um, India and Pakistan done nine nuclear blasts each in 89, um, was it? I think it was. And the whole world lost their minds because 18 nuclear weapons have went off. Well, like I read those headlines for the other night, it was over 70,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of radiation in the first little bit from Fukushima. 70,000 Hiroshima bombs released into the environment. And, you know, it's not a big meteorite coming at us, even though it is. But if it was, we wouldn't have to make these videos because everybody would get it. And the urgency is real because you go out into the real academic community, which is what we source all of our stuff from, and uh, they're, they're, they're more scared than what we are. They're more terrified by this than we are. They're more shocked and horrified than we are. And, you know, I, like I give scientists a hard time sometimes because I'm really angry that people are not speaking up. I understand why a lot of them can't. But at some point they will. At some point they have to. At some point, of course, it will be too late. And that's why we are forcing it out there, constantly pushing back, and it's working in that sense. The community that I see out there reporting on Fukushima is using our narratives. And um, that's uh, unusual, because in the last three weeks we have seen that repeatedly now in headlines where people are being forthcoming. People are coming out and saying it. After we get here and we ream them away, it's starting to show up. That's my opinion, and I'm not saying it's because of us so much as I'm saying it's because somebody else says it first, now they can say it. That's how it really works in the world. Somebody has to come out and say stuff first before the others will speak up. 
You know, a patriot is feared and scorned, but when his cause succeeds, it costs little to join. And that's what we see. But it's also, you get to keep your job. You can say, oh, well, they're saying it out there in videos anyway, boss. You know, it's like, and that's truly the way it works. And that's what we do, what we do every night. And we say the things we do, we talk about things in reality, is order, uh, we have to have a strong argument to counter the mainstream media. In the very near future, we need as many educated people as we can get together that are, you know, articulate and sincere and are factual and they're not going to fabricate it or misrepresent because you don't need to. You don't need, I mean, look at the video I made, you know, Fukushima Butter Numbers. I don't need to fabricate any of those numbers, see? I just need to start remembering them so I can use them in context. Like everybody in Seattle in June 2011 ingested 10 hot particles a day. 10. Some people were ingesting thousands that day. People that were outdoors running and jogging, working hard. The children in the schoolyards that were playing, if they're still allowed to do that. A lot of schools you're not allowed to play anymore, but any uh, people that are riding their bicycles or anybody, um, you know, like firefighters that day, uh, ambulance workers that day, police officers that day, and anybody that went out to a shop that day were severely, severely exposed and this will tax your immune system, even if you are a really healthy eater and you're a really healthy person. This will still attack your uh, immune system. But those types of people got a better chance of uh, getting away with it than somebody who's eating GMO all the time. Those people don't have a chance. And they don't know any better. And they need to know that the GMO, the, the formaldehydes and the glossophates in the GMO, that has no nutrition, it's engineered out. Um, won't allow you to uptake your nutritions. And so turmeric is unbelievable amount of nutritions in turmeric. Uh, DCA, and I can't remember who was telling me last night got their DCA order just showed up. And I meant to grab a screen capture. Hang on. No. I know what. Somewhere else. Hi, Albert. Uh, good one, Serge. i got to catch up with what Serge said now. Up, 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 Albert. Hi, Comfort Climate. How are you? Thank you. Radioactive Zombie Wasteland. Yeah. And there's a video in my favorite. The last video I put in my favorite was uh, Radioactive Cockroaches song. If you never heard it, it was worth listening to. Great song. He's out making more music, I'm sure. Hi, Cam Camshaft. Your comments are freezing up. Uh... Hi, Youngi, Y-O-U-N-G, uh, Bree T. Does everyone know about Hatrick Penny's proof of a drill, right? Um, Hatrick Penny's got more videos out. Uh, Nuber Magic 2012 got videos out. Miss Melky got more videos out. Uh, Radchick hasn't got no videos out lately. Um, let me see if there was... Who the hell was I thinking about that time? I can't even remember. So I'll come in and say hi to a few people. Hi, Ivan. We hijacked your carrier waves, yeah. Hi, Manderson. O three one two. I'm just trying to catch anybody. Got something to say here to jump off on. So Miss Milky introduced HP to uh, Shazam. Good one. He certainly helped uh, HP out. HP's... Uh... Now, if anybody's not familiar with Hattrick uh, Penry, uh, there's a link below to his uh, YouTube channel. You'll find his website or you can look it up. Um, and there's a link uh, below to the fire reports, which is what he covers uh, constantly. And um, the fire reports is like, uh, it's plume gate. And so it's all the emails and the correspondence and the redactions. Um, they are up on a official site and everything is authentic. And so I got a link below to the FOIA, Japanese FOIA re um, links. And that's really important uh, that, you know, we need to get in there and find stuff and bring it 
in the context there's another link below on my site here of pictures and so a lot of these uh, all of those um, fire releases can be married up to the pictures because those pictures were taken by the Fukushima 50 and there's 99 downloads of pictures there and there's a couple of thousand uh, pictures and the bad pictures that you'll find there are good pictures even though they're bad pictures they're good pictures because you were talking about the Fukushima 50, got in on that site, snapped pictures of everything, and so radiation will screw up your camera. They got uh, plastic on it because of the radiations and rain, and so they're, they're taking pictures through uh, plastic, but a lot of the pictures are really clean, really good pictures, incredibly clean, uh, good quality, high quality, you can zoom right in on it. And... Oh, No, I haven't dived uh, John Doe lately. That's in the works. Um, there's other things in the works, uh, but like, yeah, we're in a lot of trouble right now because of the radiation plumes are here. And they're not only here, they're all the way. And within a year and a half, it's going to be complete. And then it spills into other oceans and other environments and other habitats and other countries. And the big concern is certainly radiation, but also supercell storms, mega supercell storms like hit the Philippines. For some reason, I'm constantly thinking, waiting for that to happen somewhere else, terrified of it, that it's going to happen here. And I appreciate it that it can happen here. We get some pretty big hurricanes here folks and I've been out on the ocean caught in um, in 100 mile an hour winds and maybe I'll just end the story tonight on uh, another diving story I guess uh, as we shut it down for the night and I'll come in after and read everybody's comments it's only 51 minutes tonight I know but it'll probably take me nine minutes to tell this story it's a good story it's a crazy story actually we had been on the ocean I think it was about 106 days and it's appropriate it was just a couple of days before Christmas and so we had uh, one day left to dive and it's pretty good weather so we went diving and by the end of the day the wind picked up to 60 70 80 miles an hour gusting and we were tied on to fisheries and oceans cam boys and uh, that was just past Metacatla up in the north up in the northern Canada there's 26,000 islands up here and so um, next day, uh, next morning, I was going to make a run into Prince Rupert to tie up and catch a plane out. Uh, that was three days before Christmas. And just get a few days off. I've been out, like I say, for about 106 days straight without coming ashore on the ocean. And I had changed up um, my tenders, which are the people upstairs. And I was a commercial diver, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. And I used to dive six hours a day every day, 315 days a year on the ocean. Uh, on the ocean floor six hours a day but anyway um, it was a day of hell literally a day of hell and so I'll try to keep it as short as I can but uh, I'll make sure that uh, I cover some of the really good points so you can really appreciate what kind of a hellish day that was uh, they were calling for a hundred mile hour gust and I decided I was gonna make a run for a Rupert uh, and uh, I think um, that boat was 42 feet long. He had spent a quarter million on it. And, of course, um, he was taking care of his wife. His wife had uh, skied off a cliff um, probably about a year before that. And that's kind of an interesting story, too. And uh, she had skied off a cliff about 200 feet and... Uh, she was in the hospital for almost two years, and he was with her the entire time. I ran his fleet uh, while he took care of her. And um, when he took her to the hospital, he brought her to a church, even though she still had her last surgery on her head, so her head had the big bandages on it. He took her to a church and married her. And he had uh, around 400 people there. And uh, that's why I ran that fleet for two years for that guy. Um, but anyway, um, so anyway, I, I make a break for it, and it turns out my fuel tanks were dirty. And so the ocean is rolling, 
the ocean is rolling and your tanks and my Raycor filters had plugged up, I changed them. But it wasn't my Raycor filters. It turned out it was inside my it was inside of my uh, fuel tank itself, dirt flakes of uh, inside the tank because it was an older boat and they never pulled out the tanks, they had done the refit mostly aluminum cab and everything else and the decking and that onto it, the, the bulwarks and that. And uh, so anyway what I done was I took a high pressure hose, I cut it off from a 35 PSI tank, 3500 PSI's and I put the hose up against the tank and we, we took the outside caps off and then I blew 3500 PSI back into the tank in order to dislodge the dirt. Now the trick of this was it was blowing 80 miles an hour. I was broke down so I turned broadside and I had a boat in tow that I had rescued off a beach and this boat was around 30 feet long and it was full of planks because every time the tide, it took about six days for the tide to get high enough to get it back off the beach and so each high tide it would do damage and I would stick planks on it with tar or nails and hammer it on and the idea was to bring it back in, tear all the planks out and get it fixed when we came back from Christmas. So that was hellish on its own and anyway uh, once I got the fuel running, I took the hose off, the fuel comes flying out, and I stuck the hose back on it, and there's a diesel, so I went over and pumped the diesel up, the fuel up, and I uh, yelled out to the tender to start the engine, and he started the engine, and he, now he should have went and looked to see where the boat was that we were towing, and that was actually ramming into us. Uh, and so what he done was he just started the boat up and went to bring the bow around and the, the tire, because when I tow big boats is I put a tire in between it, I put three or four ropes on one side of the tire, three or four ropes on the other side of the tire, so the tire takes all the banging. And you got to remember it's blowing about 80 miles an hour, we're sideways, I'm covered in diesel, I'm down in the engine room, it's very hot, and I'm slamming in everything, and I'm trying to get the engine going again because we're not very far from shore. And uh, he wraps it around the prop. And at the same time, as within a minute or so, we had a whole bunch of logs had broken uh, free of a boom and drifted in on top of us and started punching holes in us. And so you can imagine, this is total chaos. And the only solution is to suit up, jump in, and cut everything off the prop. So the first thing I do is I jump in and I cut the rope to the boat and let the boat go. And that drifted and went up on the beaches. Uh, and I mean beaches, not rocks, thank goodness, we recovered it later. And so I'm down there, I'm hanging onto the bottom of the boat, and it's almost dark now, and we had dropped the anchor, I got the tender to drop the anchor down about 100 feet, and what that does is it brings the boat bow around, but we got no power, and also if I drift in too close to land, hopefully that anchor is going to um, grab before the boat goes up on the rock. And so you're hanging onto the to the to the to the rudder and you got everything you got yourself jammed up and I got the full face on and the, the boat is lifting up and slamming me down and I'm literally coming right out of the water and I'm hanging on to it and as I come down I'm with the knife again and I'm sawing away and I'm sawing away and I can hear the anchor bang 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 and I know I must be getting close to shore and the boat is getting more violent and more violent and then all of a sudden the boat the anchor grabbed the boat brings up on it and it swung so violently tore me off the boat and so here I am I'm drifting away from the boat and um, I got back he, he threw a line to me right but it was pretty intense and so I have to get all suited up get back down in the water and I got everything off the props came back aboard and we went in hunger on an island that night and next morning went and recovered the boat that had washed up on the shoreline and then I missed my plane anyway editor but everybody was okay but it only goes to show you that you can't predict everything and I just sometimes yeah yeah nine lives no well I spent my whole life on the ocean I could actually tell these a lot of these uh, I think I probably go six months on these stories it's inconceivable once I get down to the details of how crazy of a life that was and I just thought that was a, an appropriate story for the night because the storms are going to get much more intense and uh, it's not going to be ever as simple as that. And that's not simple, what I pulled off that night uh, at all. But, you know, I was, I was lucky. And I think we're lucky enough that we could 
do something, we can change something, that if we actually went to work at this, we can understand what's coming at us uh, so much more better and be able to deal with it, because that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. We can't let them destroy the planet. We can't let them destroy every life on this planet. We can't let them take the humanity from this planet. And it's all going to come back to roost anyway. And do we have a choice? No, we don't. Do we have a right? Yes, we do. Do we have the ability? Most likely. There's 4,200 peer review academic studies that are locked away every single day. And so when you say, not you, but when someone says to you, uh, well, you know, you got to show me a peer review study, you say, well, there's 4,200 locked away every day that you paid for, that your tax money paid for, that your children's produce and that a uh, handful of corporations get the copyright to. And that's the information that could uh, liberate us, could free us, or at least give us the opportunity, at least give us the ability, and most importantly, give us hope. Most importantly, the most important thing that we need now is hope. And because people, uh, understandably so now, are feeling uh, hopeless and helpless, and that's not acceptable, ever. And that, that is something that um, drives me every day to learn more, to be more forthcoming, to be more knowledgeable, and to not let the anger take over as much, even though it's necessary and it's unavoidable sometimes, because uh, emotions are emotions and you shouldn't avoid your emotions sometimes, especially when you realize that is a missing link out here, is the emotions. Media is a drone, and we need hope. And I think hope is right here waiting for us. 4,200 peer review studies. And just imagine one day worth of peer review academic studies. There's three a minute, 1,000 page studies published. Not, not talking about the ones that are not published. It's probably twice as many, three times as many. So if we took those resources, a little bit of those resources, one-third of those resources, one-tenth of those resources, and put them to work on solving the nuclear waste, the nuclear contaminants, nuclear robots, nuclear health, nuclear mitigations, nuclear considerations, we would have hope. But with all the lies, the constant, constant, absolutely criminal lies, that the gatekeepers are telling, right? That's criminal. And at some point, you know, critical mass is going to be reached. And people are waking up. People are understanding it. And people are not going to put up with it much longer. And But we want to do this reasonably well, right? We want to do this the right way. We don't want the panic. We want clear and con concise uh, ways of going about it. And we can do that. Uh, but not with the media, not what they're doing to us. Uh, they can't be trusted anymore. So we got to come up with a way, and, and I'm not sure what that will entail, but we, we're going to have to come up with a way. And that's the idea of that presentation that I'm putting together uh, for the community, is to uh, explain it and to give us a way forward. And so that's going to cost a lot more research. I Certainly i got a lot of great ideas, but... When I put it into a presentation, then I'll be putting it up here on the site also and encouraging people to show that in their communities uh, because I will go down the right path when I'm doing that, and I am doing it. And I'm, going, I'm taking the, you know, the, the least worn path because I think that's the way it's got to go. And that way everybody gets a fresh idea and a fresh understanding. So we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Um, I miss you, Watts. Albert, Raw Food, Miss Milky, Slayer Killer, uh, Met Paul, Cats Alive, Camshaft, Albert, ooh, let me see, Jimmy Jones, we got Sylvia, we got Lisa, Duane, we got Daisy, 333, Ivan, oh, um, Shift, Suki Katatomoto, we got David Maurer, hi David. Alex, Mickey, Manderson, Zipfree. Uh, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. And 
Hour and four minutes was a lot longer than I was expecting. So we'll see you folks on the rebound. And tomorrow night we'll try a bit of comedy. Take care, folks. It's not gone yet. It's not gone yet. YouTube hates me. Doesn't like me. Wants me to sign in again. So last night I couldn't, just like tonight, look, last night I couldn't turn it off either. I'm still trying to turn it off here, folks. Stop streaming again. Here we go again.